Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, and Prince Harry announced yesterday that they have two new nonfiction series in partnership with Netflix. Few the pearl clutching over how they might be milking their royal connections or using their titles in these series. And the shame that it might bring to the royal family. Which, in terms of shame, I, I don't know, this, this guy is a hard act to follow. Ultimately, the press is not actually mad about non-working royals getting into business ventures or those with close royal connections, despite the protestations of one Jan Moya, who wrote, Indeed, some are convinced that American Riviera Orchard will taint the monarchy with an unsavory strain of commercialism. You can't really be serious about that when you have Sarah Ferguson publishing books with Duchess of York, Princess Anne's son doing these milk commercials, or Tom Parker Bowles, who is releasing a cookbook later this year called Cooking and the Crown littered with royal iconography. Side note, I've had people say to me, no one knows who Tom Parker Bowles is. If no one knew who Tom Parker Bowles was, his name would not be prominently featured at the top. There is a reason for that. Y'all really think people in Britain don't know Parker Bowles? Come on. But since this announcement, we've heard nary a complaint about Tom Parker Bowles using his royal connections or about this being an inopportune time to announce when his stepbrother's wife is going through cancer and his stepfather. In fact, some outlets have gone as far as to say that Prince Harry is being sent a message by Tom Parker Bowles in this new book that I'm gonna assume no one has seen yet. So I, I don't really know how they know that Tom Parker Bowles is sending a message, but sure. The message is that there is a correct way to exploit the monarchy. According to a royal expert, he is sending a message that you can talk about the monarchy in positive terms and not denigrate it as Harry did in spare. Harry washed his dirty linen in public and that is something Tom would never do. Well, for starters, it's a cookbook, not a memoir. But also thank you for telegraphing how you will cover this book no matter what is in it. No, it's not that Harry and Meghan have business ventures that makes people mad. It's that they willingly walked away. Meghan in particular walked away from what is supposed to be the dream. We have been fed a steady diet of movies, of books growing up that the dream, the goal is to find love and especially love that includes a castle. That is the happily ever after. So for a couple to challenge that and say, no, actually, we, we would rather work. We would rather not do this because of aspects that are not so happy. That goes against everything that we are supposed to believe about royalty and about what it means to be royal. Not to mention that in the UK, especially with Brexit, nationalism has really been growing and the British royal family, despite having European roots, has really been co-opted to be this national identity. And in some ways, rejecting that is rejecting the UK, is rejecting the fabric of what it means to be British. And part of that is intrinsically the British royal family. And the fact that obviously writing pieces about Harry and Meghan that are negative, get more clicks, sell more papers, make advertisers happy. I'm super interested in these new series. I think cooking and gardening makes a ton of sense given Meghan Markle's new brand launch and then professional polo. If they do that documentary the way they did Heart of Invictus, I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. Plus, we know that Harry loves polo. So these seem like two really smart moves in their partnership with Netflix. More to come.